Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now. Stop the cap. No bullshit. What's going on, everybody? This is PhD. Darian, the guy with no PhD. Depends on who you ask. I got a PhD. I want to talk about something that's been literally bothering the crap out of me for the last 24 hours, and it's this. Navy lowers entrance exam requirements and bid to get more recruits. Now, I was talking to a few, a few of my junior sailors yesterday, and recruitment isn't really the problem as much as it is retention. A military should understand that it should recruit, train, equip, deploy, and sustain or supply their troops. Any military. Recruitment is not that hard. The military can recruit itself in the sense of pride and or that could be a completely spin off. You know, uh, maybe there isn't as much patriotism as there once was. Maybe the way that the government has treated its military during this past pandemic, scamdemic, plandemic, whatever you want to call it, doesn't help. The fact that our civilian counterparts get vastly more money than we do for the same job doesn't help. So people are getting out in droves faster than they are coming in. But it's not that the job is not fun. It's not that the job can't be uh, rewarding, beneficial. There's a lot more to it. So this pisses me off because I'm retiring in June, right? I would have had just over 21 years of service. And these are my replacements. This dude right here is my replacement. And that's fine, right? I don't know him. And it doesn't help that they use his face and these two for this title, right? Lowers entrance exam requirements to, in bid to get more recruits. I also have a problem with this for another reason, and that's this. Everybody in the military has a designator as far as like officers have a designator. You have an MOS, a military occupational specialty, or like in the Navy, we call it a rating, right? This is the job that you do specifically. While we all may be in the military or we all may be in the Navy, we're all considered sailors. This sailor is an aviation sailor. This sailor is a surface sailor. This sailor is a submariner or subsurface sailor. This sailor is in naval special warfare, naval special operations, naval uh, intelligence, you know, and keep it keeps going. So boot camp is the only thing that we all have in common or officer candidate school, the academy. And then you go through advanced schooling. Now, do we still have some smart minds in the military? Absolutely. But the fact that they're letting in people who can't cut the mustard, it, it's pissing me off because it's like, is this what you guys are going to have the next generation of the military be? Officer and enlisted? People who, who couldn't pass basic aptitude tests? People who don't know left from right? And they say they may qualify for specific ratings, which brings me to another point. If you have a certain rate where your ASVAB score is down here and you work with people who need to be up here do not be confused as to why they don't do your damn job all right I, I deal with that all the time you know we deal with people who think well how come those guys aren't doing what we're doing it's like we don't do the same job nope I didn't they didn't put my mind in this job so I can turn around and do your damn job that doesn't mean you're an idiot that just means maybe my mind was set on something different like if you are a cryptologist or an information systems technician in IT, somebody who needs to do the, you know, the science engineering portion of the military, and then I say, you need to clean all this crap like the other dude who clearly cut a damn low score in his ASVAB, you would look across like, no. I have nothing against that guy or gal. I appreciate what they do, but they clearly aren't qualified to do damn my job, so why do I need to do their job? No one in the military talks about this. We all think that we're all the same, and we're not. Nope. Right, most people, like matter of fact, we had people, uh, she'll never see this video. We had somebody fly in my helicopter yesterday, uh, a canine handler out here in Italy, and specifically before that flight, I asked, hey, have you ever flown in a helicopter before? She didn't say, nope. No, but she did say I flew in a C-17 once. What? That, that's not what I asked you. Nope. If I asked you, have you ever shot a rifle, and you told me you shot a slingshot before, so what?
that's not what I freaking asked you. Have you ever shot a rifle is the question, so answer a yes or no. Don't tell me what you've done until after you've answered my damn question first. And this is my point. Those type of people, and she threw up in the helicopter all over the place, by the way, um, which is why I asked if you get like motion sickness, stuff like that. She threw up all over that shit. And it, it's just annoying as hell to me that they can lower the recruitment age for things like that and then get into it. So it says right here, as the military struggles to attract new recruits, the Navy on Monday began a pilot program that will let in those who have lower scores on part of the entrance exam used to gauge a recruit's ability to serve. I could tell you from experience right now, there are plenty of people who don't need to serve already. There are some people that we're always constantly looking at saying, how the hell did this person get recruited, vetted, trained, put in whatever position to now come and work for this unit. Like, I don't see how in the world that even happened, but it does. People slip through the crack all the time. It says potential sailors are required to take the Armed Forces Qualification Test, or AFQT, we acronym everything, to determine whether they're qualified to serve as part of the ASVAB. Again, under the Navy's pilot program, the service will accept lower scores on the AFQT between the 10th and 30th percentile. As long as a prospective sailor's ASVAB and individual line scores are still high enough to qualify for a Navy rating. Certain rates in the Navy require you to be very smart, very intelligent, right? Very mathematically, mechanically inclined, however you want to view it. Some of them just want you to be a straight adrenaline junkie based on whatever you want to call it. And we have those ratings or jobs for a reason, and that's fine, right? We are different. We can't all do the same job. We are not all the same rate. We don't all work in the same field. So I understand that. But some things are just straight up. Why in the world do we keep moving the goalpost? And I understand recruitment may be hard. This is where you get into other political things and talk about drafts. And, and yes, females are a part of that. This is where you get into things and say, do we actually, I, I can tell you right now, the retention is the biggest problem. Like I stated earlier in this video, there are so many people that would be best to keep in the military than to force them out just to get new people all the time. Like, can you imagine any business that keeps just hiring and firing and letting go people? And they say, we, we just need that. It's like, don't you want people who have longevity in a business, people who can get your end goal, people who've been here long enough. Experience matters, but no one even cares about someone's experience these days. Like at all. When it comes to shooting, as I'm a firearm instructor as well, when I first shot in the Navy, you had to shoot at 25 meters or 25 yards, I'm sorry, 25 yards. Now, the longest you have to qualify for is 15 yards. Why? Is because everyone started sucking so bad when it came to shooting that they said, oh, okay, well, since everyone sucks at this, let's just move the goalpost. Let's have them shoot closer now. Guess what? They still suck. So are we going to move it to just seven yards and call that the furthest distance that you have to qualify for? And this is basic. This isn't advanced shooting. This is just basic shooting. And a lot of people say, hey, don't get offended. Like when I work with other entities, other people from Marines, Army and stuff, they say, hey, don't get offended. But anytime that, you know, uh, the standard drops below, the Navy moves the standard to that. And that's true. And that's upsetting. And that's also why I'm about to retire. And I don't hate the Navy at all. I'm definitely just, it's time for me to leave. 21 years is a long time to do anything. I don't care who you are, especially when it's changed 10 plus times and not always for the good. Nope. As a matter of fact, in my job alone, I am more restricted now than I ever was when I first got qualified to do most of these missions that I do. Yes, some of the gear has changed. Yes, I have a cooler pair of pants. I have uh, you know, a different communication system with the aircraft. The aircraft has a better camera on it. But the way we employ that thing is absolutely backwards in our tactics, backwards in our training, backwards in our thinking. And it doesn't make any sense to me. And so therefore, I feel like the Navy has said, you need to go. 
we have a new generation of people with lower test scores that can do your job very, very well. And we'll train them and they'll get out in four years and then we're gonna try and train their little brothers and sisters when they get to that age. And then when they get out, we're gonna do the same thing to their uh, younger siblings as well. And I'm like, that's fine. If that's what you wanna do, that's fine. As a matter of fact, like I'm 39. I'm going to retire 21 years at the age of 39 and the Navy, that which was the cap at one point for, and it's changed up and down. That was the oldest that you can join the military. They moved that 39 to 41. I can't imagine right now at my body's level, mainly because of my current job, of starting a career in the military. I couldn't do it right now. Nope. Now I'm going to get out and go into law enforcement most likely, but I cannot get out and join the military with as much stuff as happened right now. Uh, it says right here, those who fail within the fall within the lower AFQT percentiles must have already graduated high school and the Navy plans to offer this exemption for up to 20% of its accessions. The pilot program will run through the rest of fiscal year 2023, which is what we're currently in right now, if you don't know. Uh, our fiscal year starts October. So October to October. So currently, even though it is calendar year 2022, we are past October. We are in physical year or fiscal year, FY, whatever you want to call it, 23. And we'll be reevaluated re in October, which is why it says that. So October of 2023 will be the beginning of fiscal year 2024. As we continue to navigate and challenge, or sorry, a challenging recruitment environment, changing the AFQT requirement revol uh, removes a potential barrier to enlistment, allowing us to widen the pool of potential recruits and creating opportunities for personnel who wish to serve. I will say there is one thing in that, people who do wish to serve who cannot serve, that sucks. There is a job for you, if you will, but the way they're going about it is just not healthy in my opinion. Like I stated before, retention is the Navy's problem or the military's problem. It's not recruitment. Lots of people join. They just get out and more people are retiring like myself. I joined in 2001. I'm just getting out in 2023. So they had no problem of getting me to stay in because back then I was able to do my job. I was able to do the job I signed up for, not with support signed up for, not with maintenance signed up for, not with admin signed up for. I signed up for my job. I was able to do my job. And then they said, I want you to also do their job. And I was like, nope. And so that's another reason why I'm like, you know what? This Navy is going in a direction that I no longer want to continue on with. So this is where we call it. Um, I'm not upset at the military, everybody has to change their plans at some point. Um, and because theirs changed inevitably, so did mine. Let me know what you guys think about this. Are you impacted by this? What do you think the military is going to be like now that we have adopted this policy to let in people who would previously not be qualified to serve? Do you feel that it actually doesn't matter as long as they're willing to take a bullet? That's standard people thinking if they're willing to die for their country, I don't care what they scored. I don't care what their sexual preference is. I don't care what their race is. Is this the same thing? Do you not care what their uh, intelligence level may be if they even have the bare minimum to join in the military? Do you think the standard should be lowered? Do you think it should actually be raised or what? Let me know in the comment section. I'm actually really curious to think. Uh, to hear what you guys think about it. And of course, some of you guys are active. Some of you guys have never served. Some of you guys probably plan on serving. Either way, I want to get opinions from everybody, whether you're in the Navy or not. You may know somebody in the Navy. Most of us do. Either way, it's PH Darren, and I'm out. Peace.